Hello, my name is Alberto Gascon, and in this part we will see a few practical cases where simulation is helpful. And we will introduce the techniques behind the simulation program developed by the University of Granada. There are many problems that can be solved numerically in, in aerospace applications. For example, in antenna design, we can use it to decide the location of the antenna and to study its revolution pattern. In aircraft design, it's fundamental when we have to study its radar cross section. And EMC is, in EMC is applied to, to many, many problems, among which we have chosen three. For example, landing effects. And the main problem when we study landing effects is that if we, will, if we want to study the effect of a lightning in a laboratory, we have to reproduce a lightning. But lightning have, lightnings have very, very large intensity. And when we say large, we are talking something in the range of tens to hundreds of thousands of amperes over a very long duration. So it's that it's a challenge to it's a challenge to reproduce them in a lab. And then many of the of the effects of lightnings that we are interested in are destructive effects. So they they, they destroy the, the the systems they they go through. Uh, in this case, if we want to run a test and we destroy the system or the equipment, we will not be able to repeat the test again. So for those two reasons, these two reasons, the, the non-repeatability and the, the difficulty to generate the lightning in the laboratory, it's very useful to have simulations at hand. Then we have radiative fields. In this case, we want to study the, the response of, a, of an aircraft to radar or to other airplane systems. The thing is that these tests, when when run, they need to deployment of a lot of equipment, which and which means time, means money, and needs a lot of safety measures. So simulations can help us to that can help us to narrow down the the possibilities of the test we want to run. So we will, when we will go to the field to actually run the test, uh, we'll have fewer options, and we won't we won't have to move expensive and delicate equipment here and there to to decide which test in particular we are going to we are going to run. Then in electrical network design we have a very few design challenges. We have very tight environments as you can see on the right. This is an actual electrical network in an airplane. We have thousands of cables, we have different materials, we have connectors um, and the environment is very very tight. So this means that it's very compact. This means that first measuring inside is a problem. And then if we have to make a change, it's very difficult to access and make changes after deployment. In this case, simulations are going to be very helpful to predict potential problems, to try to avoid pitfalls, and trying as much as possible not to make changes after we have everything deployed. Actually, electro, the electrical networks in an aircraft is an example that we will use to show how complex EMC problems can be treated numerically. This is a very interesting problem because we have different description levels. We are going to have field preparation to study interferences. We are going to have networks of cables and, wire and wires, which are described by the voltages and currents. And then we have interconnections between these wires and these cables which are usually be described by electronic signals. Solving and simulation and simulating this kind of problem is the goal of the University of Granada group within the project Siete. Um, in the next slides, we will see how we have described each level and how we have hybridized them to solve this, this multi-level problem. So let us start with the, from the outside in with the fields. To study fields, um, to solve numerical fields, we use the finite difference time domain applied to the to the maximum to the maximum equations. In the FDTD, the, the core of the FDTD, FDTD method is the discretization of the time and the space of the domain we're working we're working in. Discretizing the the space means dividing the or domain in a series of is it in, a, in a series of cells which we call the grid. And discretizing the time means solving the problem in a series of discrete time steps instead of a continuous step. Then, 
if we have the design of the body we want to study the field of radiation on, we mesh it on the on the discrete ice grid, and we take the maximum equations and we substitute the derivatives by their finite differences equivalent. So we go from the maximum equations in the integral in integral form to the maximum equations in the discretized form. What we will have is the um, the electric and the magnetic fields interleaved in a spike in a spike in a space and time. Then the the wire networks can be described using transmission line theory. To apply transmission line theory to wiring networks, we um, there are a series of, um, of prerequisites that we have to fulfill. We need it to be described as a series of n plus one conductors, which means n where one plays the, the role of a, of a reference. Then the line has to be electri electrically long because in transmission line theory, lines are, des are described as a, as a structure with distributed parameters. This is the inductance, the conductance, the resistance, and the capacitance of the line are per unit length per meter. Here we can see the per unit length equivalent of a, of a 2 conductor line. And then the line has to be a transverse, transverse electromagnetic structure, which means, which means that there is no losses, there are no losses, or a quasi-time structure, which means that the losses are, are small. These are some examples of multi-conductor multi, multi transmission lines. Here, for example, we have three conductors where one of them plays a role of a reference conductor or two conductors over ground plane. The ground plane plays a role of the, of the reference conductor. And here to have a, a coaxial, okay, coaxial cable with two wires inside where the shield plays a role of the reference conductor. FDTD can be applied also for transmission to transmission line theory, and actually we that's the way we have implemented a solution for transmission lines. So the concept is the same. We discretize time and we discretize space. In this case, instead of the discretizing a 3D domain, we are discretizing discretizing a one-dimensional domain, which is the, um, the direction along the along the wire. And in the same fashion, we substitute the derivatives for their finite different equivalent. What you can see on the right is a, this, this, the discretization of a typical multi -trans well, transmission line. And we here we also have the um, the uh, instead of having electrical magnetic field or our solution is to the voltage and current which are also interleaved in space and time. In this case Typically, the voltage, voltages are, are assigned to the nodes of the transmission line and the, and the discretization, and currents are assigned to the, to the segments. A particular theme of the FDTD solution of, of transmission lines is that the streams of the line, in the streams of the line, the voltage and time are not interleaved. We are trying to solve voltage and the, sorry, the voltage, the voltage and the current. We are trying to solve the voltage and the current at the same point in space and at the same point in time. And we need uh, to find a, a relation between the voltage and the and the current and the source and, and in, at the source and the load of the transmission line. Uh, this is very easy when we are just using resistive loads. But the thing is, if we complicate the loads, uh, there are some techniques, but they 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 usually escape poorly with with complexity. Um, they usually rely on having a dog implementation. So we have if we have different configurations in the loads, we will need different implementations. This is a problem, and what we um, our approach has been to use a circuit solver to treat to treat interconnections. This means that when we have wiring networks that are so that are connected by by complex circuits, we will use a circuit solver to treat them. So now we have three descriptions for three different levels, fields, transmission lines, and circuits, but they are defined on different domains. So we are going to have mechanisms to couple them. So we have, let's say on the on the side, we have the field domain, which is three-dimensional. Here we have field propagation. 
then if at some point in this domain we have a um, we have our network we're going to use it we're going to describe it using a transmission line which is a one-dimensional approach plus a two-dimensional approach which is that in a in a transmission line the key parameters to describe it are the we have already said it the per unit length, inductance, capacitance, resistance, and conductance. And this can be solved, this, this depends on the on the cross-section, because it depends on the structure and on the distribution of the conductors inside the, um, inside the wiring network. And this is a 2D problem, which we have also implemented in a particular problem in our, in our single solver. And then the connections between the between the wires and the connections between wires and the and the plane structure are going to be solved using a circuit a circuit solver. This is a circuit domain. So first, how we go from the field domain to the transmission line domain? We know that to describe the field domain, we're going to use Maxwell equations. To use a transmission line domain, we're going to use the telegraphy equations equations to solve the for the voltage and the current in the inside the wiring network. It's important that <clears throat> we are not working with wires, but we're going to be working with bundles. So imagine we have a, imagine we have a wire inside the um, inside our three-dimensional domain. This is this will will not be just a single wire, but inside can be so we, we call this a bundle. A bundle is a, a series of a series of nested transmission lines we can have that can have inside uh, any combination of other transmission lines. So you can have single wires, other um, other wire bundles, shields, the electrics. So which is the connection between these two domains? Then in the Maxwell equations, we have a term, which is the, the current density. And in the, in the um, telegraphy equations, we have a term, which is the um, the external field. This is going to be the connection between these two domains. This external field in the in the in the transmission line equations will correspond to the to the field propagated by the by the by the field domain by the maximum equations. And the current density term in the maximum equations will be the current uh, resulting from solving the from solving the, tele the telegraphy equations. Here we have two terms, a few terms that are very important. This set here is the shield transfer impedance. This is very important because this is the term that is going to, to relate the field, the field in the field domain to the currents in the, in the transmission line domain. And also it's important to notice that now the um, the per unit length param parameters, the inductance, the capacitance, the, resist the resistance, the conductance, they are now, they are not numbers, they are matrices. If we have, a, as in this case, a, a bundle with, let's say, 10 conductors, these matrices are going to be 10 by 10, 10 by 10 matrices. And we will see um, how they are implemented because it's important to see how both domains are connected. So in the case of the trans of the shield transfer impedance, it's important because when we see the wire from the from the field domain, we will see that we have an external field impinging on a wire. The thing is, this external field will, will appear as a as a distributed voltage source on the size of the of the our bundle, and if our bundle has wires inside, the this voltage, this voltage outside will couple to the to the wires and will appear as a current on the wires. This coupling between between the voltage the voltage outside and the current inside is mediated by the transfer impedance. This transfer impedance is an input. It has to be provided by the manufacturer or characterized in measurements. This is a characteristic of the of the shield of a of a one of a of a bundle. For example, if you have a coaxial. This transfer impedance is is a, a characteristic of the of the shield of the coaxial. It depends on, on its material, on the way it's braided, if it has holes or it doesn't, etc. What is the shape of this matrix? In this case, that we have four conductors, the shield outside and three conductors inside is going to be a, 
4 times 4 matrix. And since this transfer impedance relates the wires from different levels, from the outside to the, to the inside, the diagonals are going to be zero. There is no transfer impedance between a level and itself. This is why we have three components here that represent the coupling from the outside to the three wires inside. And these three components here, which represent the couplings from the wires inside to the wires inside. Why? Because the shield is bidirectional. This means that if we have a, a, a field impinging on the bundle, a current will be induced inside. But if we have current flowing through the wires inside, we can also study the radial field from the, from the bundle. Okay, about the periodic length matrices. Here, the important thing is that these matrices codify a relation between the two domains. Imagine we have a bundle within a cell of the FTTD domain of the, of the field domain, and then we have our bundle, which is in the transmission line domain. Okay, all these, the wires inside the, um, the bundle, their, their periodic length parameters are described uh, with respect to the um, with respect to the outer shield, as in, and correspond to the to the entries in, in red in this matrix. In this matrix, so this inductive matrix, this this second component is going to be a two by two matrix corresponding to the to the periodic length inductance of this wire and this shield with with respect to the outer shield, and this L three is going to be also a two by two matrix corresponding to the inductance. Per unit line inductance of these two wires with respect to outer shield. The first component is the inductance of the outer shield with respect to with respect to the cell. Actually, this is um, this is what is usually called the in cell inductance and the in cell the, well, the corresponding in cell capacitance, which is conceptually more or less as the inductance of this outer conductor with respect to the outer cell as a return conductor. It's not, a, it's not exactly that, but for the time being, that's what we, this will be enough. Then finally, we have the conductance and the resistance, which are five by five matrices because we have five conductors, the shield, this conductor, another shield, and two more conductors, and they are diagonal because they, they represent the resistance and the conductance of each individual conductor. Finally, we have to connect the transmission line solver with the circuit solver. Thing is, if we're going to use a, a circuit solver, in, in, this, in our case we're going to use NG-SPICE, which is a variation of the, of the famous SPICE solver, circuit solver. If we're going to use a circuit solver, we, went, we will want to find um, a, a circuit equivalent of the of the transmission line. To do this, we discretize well we discretize, we discretize the extreme of the extremes of the of the transmission line, assume, connect, assume assuming it is connected to, to a source and a load, which is going to be a an arbitrary circuit. It will have uh, lamped components, it will have operation operational amplifiers, it will have diodes, it will have rectifiers, you name it, a, a, any electronic component that can be solved, that can be solved in a spice. Thing is, if we discretize the, um, the, the extremes of the, of the transmission line, we find these equations. These equations can be um, expressed by the circuit equivalent. Uh, each of these equations represents the equation of a node in which we have four different currents. The first term represents the current at the, at the source. The second term is equivalent to a current source with a value equal to the, um, to the current in the, in, the, in the first or the last segment of the transmission line. This term is equivalent to the current through a capacitor, and this term is equivalent to the, to the current through a, through a transistor. The thing is that if we if we if we implement in SPICE the the equivalent the, 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 the equivalent circuit to these equations, we can use them to couple the transmission line solver 
to a circuit solver. So now we have a now we, now we can introduce in SPICE the an equivalent to the transmission line, and we can use SPICE to solve the ends of the transmission line when they are connected to anything. All these tools we've been talking about have been implemented in OpenSemba. OpenSemba, you can find it in, in GitHub, it's an open it's an open source project and it's a state of the art full way solver which includes all the things we've been talking about and many more things. For example, it includes it has multi-thread capabilities, it has cluster capabilities, it, it's able to simulate a lot of different materials, uh, wired capabilities we've been we, We've been talking about them. You can study problems in the time. We can you can measure you can make measurements measurements in the time and the frequency domain, even though it's a time domain solver. But you can have some measurements in the frequency domain, and you can study problems with many different types of boundaries. To make all this solver more usable and more user friendly, it has it has been implemented implemented as a, as a workbench in FreeCAD. FreeCAD offers the possibility to, to use many different workbenches for different applications. So it has, geom for example, it has geometry workbenches for it has drafting for some physical applications of mechanics. And in, we have added a new one, which is at the electromagnetic work, workbench. So now in FreeCAD, you can use the, the native geometry workbenches to, to design your problem. And then you can use the electromagnetic workbench to define the materials that your that your problem is going to be made of, which probes you want, if there are sources, what are the boundaries of the problem, the discretization of the problem, and many and many options regarding the solver, like um, the, which kind of uh, which kind of measure you're going to use, which is going to be the time step, the final time, and also you can run the solver and display the results. This is all from my part, and now my colleague Alejandro will talk to you about one particular application using using OpenSemba and the electromagnetic workbench.